the customer's needs must come before yours. Hello, it's episode 133 of the Marketing for Owners podcast. It's John. For those of you that have not seen it before or not heard, it's John every single day. There isn't anyone else. Well, there is staff, but no one who jumps on the podcast, because that's me. Anyway, if you listened yesterday, I was on a school trip in Canada, in uh, British Columbia, went to the lovely uh, uh, Fort Langley, had a great day there, learned a lesson about marketing. Remember, show, not tell. Today, it ha- just happens to be two school trips in a row, and today was to Greater Vancouver Zoo, just on the outskirts. And, oh, it's a blazing hot day, absolutely boiling. Got up into the 80s, in fact, uh, or uh, probably up around 30 degrees in new money, 80-odd degrees in old money. Baking hot, but fortunately it's plenty of shade. But what I learned was the, the people in the zoo seem to have a different attitude to the customer than they should have. Now, perhaps I, of course, perhaps they think this is just school kids. They don't need to have a good custom, good attitude because these are just school kids and just school teachers, and maybe they get a discount. I don't know, but there were little things, and it's the little details that that just annoy and just great. These are the things that should be just so. It's not difficult, doesn't cost anything, really not difficult, but they should be the things that nobody notices, they just go, they're just just so, they just go perfectly smoothly, swimmingly, no one notices they're happening, but it's just professional. So for an example, um, it, it's an outdoor zoo with obviously open, open pens, whatever you would call them, and uh, uh, and fences, obviously, but sometimes we were staring into and uh, into areas with animals, and standing against the fence and seeing um, ostriches and antelope of various sorts and all sorts. But there are no signs. There's no sign in front of me. No sign along the fence to explain what animals are in it. And in one occasion, I, I walked along about probably another um, 50 meters or something. There was a sign. I think, but. And they may say, of course there's signs, but the signs are not enough. What would it cost to put extra signs? And that sign explained what the animals were. It didn't really tell me much about where, uh, anything about the animals. Most modern zoos, wildlife parks, whatever, seem to make an effort to explain what, what the animal's about, where it's from, Uh, where it lives, how many are left, you know, all that kind of stuff. They didn't seem to have that information. Now, um, other things were the they had a map, they printed out a map, but the map that they give you does not tell you accurately what's in the animal parts. There were animals that were there that are not on the map. There were animals on the map that weren't there. That suggests to me they update things, which is great. But hey, update your map. We want to know. We are the visitor. And other little bits, I mean again, this might just be me moaning, but when we went, the school seemed very well organised. They had a good printout and they had a schedule. We had to do this and then come back and meet in this place so that we could have a talk, etc. So when we came back to talk to the person, we came back at uh, 10.30, as it said in the schedule that they had printed. The, the lady came along and said, where are you guys been? Um, I've, I was here at 10. We had, uh, we've got you down at 10. The teacher said, well, we've got it on our map at 10.30. And the woman said, no, it's 10. <laughs> like, and there was, what happens to the, oh, really? Oh, I am sorry. Oh, sorry for that. I'll have a word with somebody. Make sure that doesn't happen again. Not the, well, you're wrong. Uh, it, I, you know, just got the impression that, hey, we're busy here, um, play with our rules or, we, or you're not welcome. 
then it, it's I mean great the people the people are good the, the park is a little tired but it obviously costs a lot to run things like this there were plenty of empty pens that say new attraction coming soon or, or something or nothing in there but again put up a sign you know when you go to one of these places and you stare and you think where is it where is it to eventually you figure out there's nothing actually there just put what difficulty would it be to put up a temporary thing saying this animal's gone to the vet or gone to for a walk or escaped or whatever hopefully not the escape but there were lots of little details it's a hot day uh, the far side of the park is quite a way away they have water drinking water for the animals can they not have drinking water fountains for the people this is the end of May it's not even June or July little kids do not last long parents can only carry so much water what would be difficult for providing drinking water things like that now what I got the impression was that they are doing good they're doing uh, preservation it's important they've got expensive they've got to feed the animals they've got to care for their diets they've got to keep them in the right environments they've got to keep everyone safe etc etc but I just personally get the impression that they feel that their mission is more important than the incidental visitors that pop along, spend the money and keep them going. I would say uh, that if they look at Yelp and see that their average rating is 2 out of 5 and the comments are not great, they would possibly, if they were interested in the customer, have a little meeting and say, hey guys, we're actually a tourist destination, which means the customer who pays should be getting something they want, and they should be telling their friends, it's great, you've got to go back there. But I just get the impression that that's not occurred to them. And please, get a new logo. Anyway, that's that. So remember in your business, customers notice the little things. The little things that cost you nothing. They notice, they grate. One adds up to two, to three, to four, to five. And then you get someone like me who sits at home and broadcasts to hundreds or thousands of people saying how frustrating it was to go to X location or to deal with X company. Don't let X company be you, my friendly owner. Today, it's Wednesday. Time for a friendly follow. Now, a friendly follow is for a Twitter handle and a blog. Today, it's for a lady called Rebecca Radis. Now, Rebecca is spelt with a K and an H at the end, and Radis is R-A-D-I-C-E. Her handle is at Rebecca Radis, and her blog is RebeccaRadis.com. She is great. Social media strategy is her bag, so look at her stuff, but, but look at the way she writes her posts. Her posts are some of those that for people who are interested in her subject, like me, you cannot help but read the whole thing, even when it comes in on the email. She emails me and says, there's a new post, I have to go click, I, have to, I think, ah, I've got work to do. I go look, and then she makes me do other things. How cool is that? From her point of view, not from mine, but she's great. And I've seen her write in lots of other locations. I've seen her on video. Very competent. Highly recommend you go look at Rebecca, see what she's doing. And also look at the pictures and the style of her, her web, uh, her blog, her social media. She brands, she has a brand, a style of image that for me, oh, that's one of Rebecca's. I can recognize them. Very subtle, very, very clever. So listen to what she says about branding. That's it. Believe it or not, hot day, been to the zoo, now I've got to go off to ice skating lessons. No, not me, little kitty ice skating lessons. I hope it's not melted, it's a bit hot. I'll catch you tomorrow. <laughs>